I'm Saturn Dave, and this is my my de facto partner, uh, my partner in crime, member Z Shiro number zero, <laughs> Patrick zero Trainer, not hero. Trainer How's it going? How is it going? How's it going? How's it going? I'll tell you how it's going. I'm yeah. small and you're big. <laughs> we all, you know what happened is I, I did something else with my camera during the week and then like I was trying to get it back where it goes and I couldn't so whatever <laughs> I look more lit today because I yeah. literally got more lights so actually you do like a human being. you look a lot better yeah yeah so thank you everybody who is joining us all 14 of you in the live chat right now if you guys happen to be watching or you uh, you join up uh, please Click on the link in the description to join us in our uh, in our Discord server. We'd love to have you guys join us in the live chat, uh, hang out uh, for the next segment where we're going to live stream games, and you guys can be a part of that and and put your two cents worth in. And uh, and it, even and it, even if you don't join us in the Discord, you know, please uh, feel free to share this out with your friends and help grow this community. Uh, this community is all about you guys, all about Saturn fans. So you guys can help by sharing this on social media, maybe sharing it with some friends that you think might like Saturn or might like the content, and uh, we can help grow this community together. How yeah, you doing, Pat? Sure to subscribe, like the video, oh, yeah. ring the bell, whatever the YouTubers say to that's get right. People to subscribe to them, do all those things. And yeah. And do all those things exactly also, my volumes apparently uh, my volume is apparently low for some reason is your volume low okay that's what, that's what mr panda man says is everything good on your end i guess i can just boost you up on the discord the boost boost you know boost. uh yeah bear with me that guys because i may very well up. i may very well have like a filter on you uh yes yeah. i do i have a compressor on you so instead of just boosting your video i think i'm just going to boost your output gain uh, how is that? Uh, how do I sound? I will talk about my what's up with me while you figure that out. So yeah, a <laughs> uh, couple new things. I got new headphones because my other ones were falling apart. So got yeah, your headphones Bar look Dynamics, awesome. Yeah, Biodynamics DT seventy sevens pros. Got the eighty ohm version, so it's a little bit more compatible with my equipment. Uh, I was thinking to step up to big boy two fifty ohms, but. Uh, I was kind of in, I was kind of worried about the compatibility and equipment, so I just went for the 80 ohms for now. Mm -hmm. The 250 in the future, and then of course, collecting again. So I got big stack iPods, big stack iPods. So he's got, I got the got yeah. What did you just go around your neighborhood on e waste day? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I literally just I literally just went on on offer up, and I think I got all these for about. 150 or something for all these nice nice so i got the got this ipod nano it's like fifth gen but it's kind of kind of knackered and not working right now so it's probably gonna go e-waste i got a little ipod touch it's only eight gigs so i'm gonna it took me like two hours to fix it so i think i'm just gonna turn it into a emulation machine mm -hmm. for the planes i got a uh got a regular an a gig 5.5 uh, gen but Unfortunately, the connector on the bottom is not responding, so I need to get put another new mo motherboard in and get that fixed. Gotcha. I got, uh, I got another uh, 80 gig 7th uh, gen, but the... Uh, what was the issue with it? What was the issue with this one? Oh, yeah, the hard drive's dying, so I need to put a new hard drive in with this one. Pretty easily easy to do. Yeah, I just need to make sure not to rip the connector out again. Yeah, but, don't do that. I got, <laughs> yeah, and I got a... Uh, I guess a five fifth gen 60 gig that's like in pristine condition that really everything works on it but I want to put a hard drive in anyways and make it like a terabyte mm -hmm. so but I have Rockbox on all of them because I want good music quality and not whatever Apple's serving me up in their in their base level so I'm not gonna deal with that so it's all gonna be Rockbox black files I'm gonna put a gig in here and have all my music on the go. Man, you're such a nerd. <laughs> but I love you. Yeah. Hey, I need I need this music. My phone sucks, so. Yeah, no, I hear you there. I mean, you know, uh, phones can be convenient. I, I do, you know, the YouTube music thing every once in a while, Spotify and everything. But I mean, as far as audio quality, yeah, no, it leaves much to be desired. So 
I can definitely get down with the iPod and the Rockbox and the nice, uh, nice headphones. Uh, anybody who's in the chat, uh, the Walkman, though. let us know, Nick, if you happen to be listening, if, if that audio tweak fixed yeah. Pat's audio, if I need to boost them up some more, I yeah. uh, would love to know when you got your cassettes, you got your Walkman there. Dude, that I'm yeah. jealous, man. Look at that. That's that's awesome. I, I would love to get me some like an analog tape player, but uh, I pretty much gave away all that stuff. All I really have extensively is like mini disc and, and vinyl. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, but uh, I'm actually looking at another Walkman hopefully this Friday, but we'll see. Cool. We'll see how that fares. I don't nice. think the guy's going to go, go, go easy on me with the price, so probably but not. Be top notch. But people we'll know see. We'll yeah see. a lot of you got to find someone who doesn't know what they have right uh, but then again yeah. you know if it, it usually those kind of folks are the the old you know mom who's getting rid of her kid's stuff and it's just like in the bottom of a box so it's probably not yeah. in very good quality it's probably not in good shape you know yeah. oh man but, the, but yeah the good thing is the one the guy actually owns a hi-fi store and he does all the maintenance on it so if i can get it at a decent price i might go for it but yeah i don't know we'll see yeah, Knight of Dragon, he's uh, he's uh, he's kind of wigging out over our video wall. Um, <laughs> wall of videos. Oh no, he he retracted the message. Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, That's right. You better retract that message. Genki Droid, thank you for the kind words about the podcast. That was a great. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, Stika and Roberto and Nuno were f awesome guys to have on the cast, and they did most of the talking, and it was just really cool to hear about another success story about Saturn, you know, that uh, it wasn't just Japan that it did well. It, it, it actually did well in, you know, Portugal, Brazil, you know, those there were other markets where it was actually quite a success, you know, and it wasn't the story of, in the West where it was like a lot of us just didn't even hear about it, you know. It was like there was all they heard about. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see other people's perspectives on things and somebody somebody mentioned and i don't remember who it was they were saying well oh i think it was slow boy was saying oh does this mean now you guys are gonna do like a, a uk uh episode and i think that would be kind of cool you know we discussed that yeah we discussed that before that i we want to get like people from the mm -hmm. the uh, dreamcast junkyard and some of the saturn junkyard guy i think only i think only simon's from the uk there yeah. right Simon's in the UK. I mean, we have we have folks. I mean, we could probably get James from Mercia in uh, in our Discord server. We could probably get him to join us. We could. There's a few. We could get Slow Boy on the cast. You know, we could get we some folks in our Discord service. People. You know, you know, a lot of those UK boys they love their Saturn. And and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. Before Shiro came around and started doing podcasts, it was like that's where I got most. That's where I scratched that itch. Uh, was on various like UK podcasts where they would talk. They would do like a Saturn episode and they would really talk about their memories of Saturn. And I was like, how come yeah. there's nothing like this in America? Like, is it really just that pathetic that that nobody in America wants to talk about this? I guess it just turns out that we were like we had to come out of the woodwork, you know, because <laughs> there's just not that we many of to. us. Yeah, like 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 the even the Dreamcast stuff's all UK stuff. Like, yeah, but man, but they yeah. do a good job covering it. I mean, uh, you know, I kind of kind of makes me jealous. I'm not jealous of those UK uh, cardboard boxes, though. Sorry, <laughs> I've got a couple of them, and the fronts get all scratched up and everything like that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, we ought to get this browser up. Let's get it up. Let's get the browser okay. up. That sounded not not and talk about something. <laughs> yeah, just not slow down there. there. Easy boy. Okay, so I'm too excited, I'm sorry. Yeah, James actually James is in the chat saying he'd he'd be interested in uh in helping out. And he's got a nice radio voice, right? No, I mean yeah. I, I we were I was in a chat with him talking about all of his modding and stuff console modding and stuff like that. And I actually think that would be awesome to have have him, maybe slow boy, just get round up a posse of UK blokes who can uh school us on saturn in the uk that would be a yeah. cool episode to do and then we get to get the german episode with Mumphis and then uh, uh Zeno. you know what you're not kidding that would be awesome to do that as well so lots of po lots of possibilities i think uh i think we're yeah. we'll definitely uh um, we've got a lot on the horizon in terms of busyness yeah. but that's definitely uh we'll put a we'll put a pin in that and come back to it so uh yep. first up on news do you want to cover nick's video you want to start us no. off i'm just joking i'll cover it <laughs> uh so basically uh our own very own pandemonium nick 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 offerson not nick offer nick offerson offerson and a boy 
Panda Man, Panda Man, whatever Panda, Panda Mania combination you want to add to it. Basically, he released a new video on Corpse Killer Graveyard Edition, which was, of course, the famous, uh, famous FMV style game by Digital Pictures. And uh, yeah, the game was horrible, but the review was good. <laughs> the like, review I, was I mean, excellent. I yeah, mean, if, if you can even call it a review, I mean, like. That's the thing is, I feel like his channel has outgrown reviews. It's kind of like Food for Dogs, you know that gal, Food for Dogs, with the ch the channel's called Food for Dogs, but I mean she's talking about like Final Fantasy on the DS or on the 3DS, yeah. you know. And I feel the same way with Nick's videos. It's just like his videos have just gone to another level, you know. And I mean, uh, and yeah, you know, there's still there's still a review kind of you know thing to it, but I mean, it's just so much more than that. Did you did you happen to watch the whole thing? I did. I watched it twice, I think. Okay. So I tell believe. me, what do you think? What did you I learn? Thought it was good. I I learned that I am glad I didn't run a studio in the '90s that spent millions and millions of dollars on those type of games only to go bankrupt. No kidding. Some of those games are underrated though. Like Double mm -hmm. Switch is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a, they did a Operation Texas or was it uh, uh, Ground Zero Texas? I think. Mm -hmm. Is that when they did? I can't they remember, did. But... They they did Ground Zero. Uh, yeah, Ground Texas Ground Zero, or Ground Zero yeah. Texas. They did fight the boxing happened. game. I think he featured. Yeah. I think he featured a few of those in the in the documentary. Just like glanced on, but yeah. Yeah, like the uh, like and they like the was the prize fighter the famous right. one that uh, we almost got a Saturn release of it, but unfortunately the disc was destroyed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was kind of a sadness in itself. And yeah, then, no, and then, yeah, and then of course the best one is uh, Scotty Pippen Slam City. Oh right, yeah. The best, the best one that has my favorite, my favorite, my favorite one-liners of all time are insults. I think they have the best one. Like, like that guy's got on anchor weights and like just insulting them and like it's like what the heck is going on, Lucky? But it's a lot of fun. I enjoy yeah. that one. But uh, I do have to say my favorite FMB game of all time has to be either Road Avenger or oh wait. Road Avenger, Lupin the Third, or sorry, uh, Cliffhanger, take a Lupin the Third, and yeah. uh, Time Gal are my favorite FMB games. Mm -hmm. And those are those are more like your traditional like, well, Time Gal, for example, is one of those like where, and even Road Avenger, I think, is where it's just like constant action and you're like pressing a button, kind of yeah. like uh, kind of like the the Dirk games. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, dragon slayer dragon slayer right you know where it's yeah. like the just it is a, yeah that i guess those are kind of like the precursor uh to like the the kind of slow plotting fmv game i mean it's an entire genre unto itself and it's very much of its time and um I, you know it makes sense you know you're saying millions of dollars were spent because they kept making a point uh the actors kept making a point that there was almost no difference to shooting that than to shooting a feature film right so i exactly. imagine getting you know licenses for things getting permits getting the, you know, shooting on location, all that stuff, that costs a ton of money. And it's just like a lot of that stuff you could, you know, just do indoors, <laughs> you know, in, in exactly. a little studio once, uh, you know, the graphics got good enough. But yeah, it's just kind of crazy. It's not the same effect, though. I mean, the effort and work they put into it was fantastic. Oh, I mean, absolutely. They shot Puerto Rico, like they shot the set, like the mini sets. I think the funniest mm -hmm. one is the, the guy who they had to hide the ladder from. Mm-hmm. Because like they made the mini sets, like, oh yeah, can we hide your ladder and put this thing on it? Yeah, that was clever. I like that. <laughs> clever solution yeah. to uh, to you know, un un unexpected problems. But yeah, it's it's weird because um, there's definitely like an old school way of doing things, and then like a new school way. Like I, I definitely think FMV games could come back and and be quite good. Just if they would, you know, punch them up and and use more modern techniques to to make them. And, um, you know, it's kind of like my, my boss, uh, she does actually like commercials in Hollywood. Like she does a lot of famous commercials, like the Budweiser horse commercials and stuff like that. And oh, a couple of years. Budweiser horses? Yeah. Yeah. She did. She did a, a couple of those actually. Not all of them, but she produced a couple of those. And she, she did the 9 11 one? Know, Lexus commercials. I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure like what her entire portfolio is, but I mean like 
You should, there's you should know by memory, Dave. You she's got kind of an old way of thinking of things where I'm like talking to her and showing her, uh, I was showing her like this, uh, this video that my friend did where there was like this overhead shot. And she's like, how did they rent the helicopter for that? And I'm like, Leslie, everything these days is drones, you know, like <laughs> you don't have to pay, you know, a bunch of money for a helicopter anymore, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, uh, that was like, well, that was a couple years ago. So I'm sure like she's, you know, with the whole drone thing now, but it's just like, that's hard for some people to like, you know, it's technology has gotten a lot better. Let's just put it that way. So I think that they can produce these kind of games for cheaper nowadays than they could back then. Cause back then they were pretty much working under the same conditions as like film, you know, uh, with all the same yeah. limitations, you know, but, uh, it's kind of funny though, when you think about that, cause I know a lot of people are nostalgic for that sort of thing and want mm -hmm. to go back and i know that like uh, the foo fighters they did a bunch of albums where they did it all analog oh yeah mm -hmm. and like and like i get that question too because i always had a funny i want to do a funny thing where i record a podcast all analog so like record it on tape mm -hmm. uh, cue all the sound effects myself like uh yeah show style and uh, everyone's like ask me the same question why would you want to do that you can just do it easily with this and i guess my answer to that is it's kind of like roughing it in the wild mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to do that. It's like, why would you want to do out it? But it's fun. It's like the experience, the challenge, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think one of the big takeaways, and this is this is going to be a theme, I think, that is, it's going to go throughout Nick's videos, throughout his entire series. And it's one of the biggest takeaways from his series that I've, that I've kind of become aware of is the fact that a lot of these studios they're not trying to make a bad game, you know, like they're, they're taking it seriously. They want to make a good game and they, and, and from, and much of the time they believe they're making a good game and it's all about context. You know, a lot of the times when you get a game like Gen War, for example, it's just a matter of coming up against limitations or deadlines, you know, or just not having access to the right tools at the right time or not having access to the right documentation. But it's not like they set out to make a crappy game or just like cash in on on a property. I mean, you know, sometimes that is the case, but I mean, it, a lot of the, a lot of the times it just seems like these, these studios have a really interesting story to tell, even if the game itself is not that great, you know? Uh, and so Nick will sum it up by saying, you know, I don't necessarily recommend you go play this game. I mean, but, um, you should experience it in some way and just realize that the, these creators took a lot of time with this and there's a lot of, you know, intent, uh, there's a lot of purpose and intention there, you know? So that's the cool thing. I think I think Corpse Killer is is neat. I, I, I it's a game I like, you know. Even though it is kind of just like walking to the right and shooting, you know. I think that it's, you know, got that B movie. Yeah. And and if you think about it, I mean, there wasn't really anything to base it off of. They're only doing the best they can with the knowledge they had. Exactly. And there wasn't any knowledge like, oh yeah, by the way, there's gonna be a future invention where you can like do these three D models or you can yeah. you can do pretty pre-rendered like donkey kong country and stuff like that a lot of that didn't exist at the time yeah when they're filming that i mean donkey kong country was at 94 right it was uh donkey kong country 94 yeah or 95, yeah. Yeah, 94, it, right, 95. right around that right holiday probably time but um yeah and a lot of those weren't even were filmed like before that or <laughs> before it was really really a, a known how they did it and the same thing actually mortal Kombat was like the realist and that was 90 two i think so 92. maybe i might be wrong on that but I, I guess the point is is that really they didn't really have the idea of how to do these things and what is the 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 way to make it realistic there wasn't any like ray tracing ability or anything of that nature there was right the unforgivable like, so yeah. the unforgivable things are like not putting in mouse support or gun support right that's yeah. now that's that's where you really can ding them and you can say okay the self-awareness that whether or not the game is good object you know subjectively based on whether you like cheesy game fmv games or not doesn't matter but but like you know bottom line creature comfort things that existed in previous games ought to exist in in like an enhanced edition right so you know it ought to it should have had gun support and i mean there's no amount of excuses i mean i get like they could they could make excuses and say okay well we just didn't have the time or we you know they should have if they spent eight million dollars shooting the darn thing they could have coded in support somehow you know they could have made it work and i think it would have been worth their while because it it probably would have aged better you know overall and might have even sold better um, and the same thing goes for racing games that are like 20 frames per second 
I think we can all agree like racing games need to be at least 30 frames per second for you to be able to see where you know see corners as they're coming up on you which is why as much as I love I love uh you know the I'm um, the black sheep you know uh, Sega touring car I often admit that it's just like okay it has an unforgivable frame rate for a racing game so I don't uh I don't hold it against people to hate it you know yeah no for real and I, and I think the hardest thing with some of the games like you mentioned with the mouse support and the and the gun support is a lot of that maybe had to do with the fact that i mean we talked about it before both on the pen and pandemonium and on our podcast that a lot of developers didn't have these technologies to work with at the time they were just mm -hmm. giving it mm -hmm. like they were just like oh hey here's here's this we can't give you s samples or anything and then it's like last second they give it to him it's like well we and like uh nick mentioned that it, it might have been pushed out for a holiday release as well so i mean well, that's On the thing the too. Figures, yeah. So, so, so that's the thing is if their little sin, I guess, is insisting on it, on releasing it in November. So if, if their hands were tied with the mouse support thing, you know, I think that they should have held out, released it later and had it be a better game, but no, they decided, you know, we're just the money, you know, is important. And we're going to try to sell it in November for the holidays. I mean, but you always have to ask, like, was it worth it? You know, did it did it pan out <laughs> the way that you that you wanted it to? You know, I mean, yeah. if it had gun, if it just don't have options for that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so the, developer, the producers like looking down the neck. It's like, game's got to go out, guys. That's twenty two. Yeah, game's got to go out. Is it ready? No. Okay, well, let's just put it out. You know, and it's funny that, exactly. that there are much lesser games. There are like. There are games that are much worse than this that do have <laughs> that either do have mouse support or gun support. So it's just, you know, uh, anyway, it was an excellent video. Yeah, I've watched it is, twice. Does Crypt Killer have gun support? Crypt Killer, I think does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Henry yeah, Explorers game. Make that game any better. Game I know, right? Sucked. So the game sucked. my bad. I'm dropping F-bombs on here. My bad, guys. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so go check out if you guys haven't subscribed to, uh, I can't imagine you haven't, but if you haven't subscribed to Nick's channel yet, uh, pandemonium reviews, every Saturn game, go, go subscribe now, give him a like and subscribe to his videos. Uh, awesome content. And he puts so much time and effort into it. Uh, you guys gotta go check it out. Um, I cannot wait for, there are a few games that I just cannot wait to see what he does. So, um, and Nick has not subscribed to his own channel. And personally, I think that's like a president not voting for himself. So it's an honor. You're not supposed to do that, even <laughs> though I did that for my own channel with Shiro. Yeah. I totally did not booster up my own personal channel with all my other accounts. 